Hi, we're going to be looking at gas-powered cycles, more specifically Brayton cycles. The, first, the Brayton cycle we're given here, or the problem statement we're given, is an ideal regenerator is incorporated in the ideal Brayton cycle of problem one. Problem one was a 15 kilogram mass flow rate of an air standard Brayton cycle has air entering at 100 kPa and 20 degrees C. Uh, the pressure ratio is 12, the maximal temperature is 1,100 degrees C, the pressure ratio across the compressor is 12, and they tell us that CP is 1.004 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. And then they also ask us to assume for a second part of this problem is that uh, the regenerator has an efficiency of 75%. They want us to determine the new thermal efficiency for this cycle. So first thermal efficiency with a regenerator of 100%, second thermal efficiency with a regenerator of 75%. What this looks like on our PV diagram is something like this. We start at point one over here, go to point two, we normally go to point three, and then four. So this would be one, two, three, four on our regular Brayton cycle. And then in between the two, we'd have some sort of point 0.5 over here, and some sort of point 0.6 over here. And everything still flows in this direction. On our TS diagram, this point 0.5 and point 0.6 are going to be a bit demystified. So we start at point 0.1 over here, go to point 0.2, still going to point 0.3, down to point 0.4, and then back to 1. This would be one, two, three, four. What happens here is this is our point five, and this here is our point six. And we're still flowing in this direction. And if we draw it out, it looks something like this. We have our compressor, and then before going into our boiler, we're going to go into our regenerator. Then we're going to go into, sorry, not our boiler, our combustion chamber. And then we can go through the turbine over here. And then at the exit of our turbine, we're also going through the regenerator like this. So this would be point one. We said right before the regenerator here, we have point two. This here is going to be point five. Right before a turbine, we'd have 0.3. Right after our turbine, we'd have 0.4. And right at the exit of our regenerator, we'd have 0.6 over here. Let's look at what's been given in our problem. They tell us that mass flow rate is 15 kilograms per second. They then go on to tell us that air enters our Brayton cycle at 100 kPa and 20 degrees C, so that's T1 is 293 Kelvin, pressure at point one is 100 kPa. They tell us that the maximal temperature, temperature at point three over here is 1,100 degrees C, so we get T3 is 1,373 Kelvin. They tell us that CP is 1.004 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. They tell us the efficiency of our regenerator in the first case is 100%, and the efficiency of the regenerator in the second case is 75%. They want us to find the thermal efficiency. We're going to assume that K is equal to 1.4. They want us to find the thermal efficiency in the first scenario and the thermal efficiency in the second scenario. We know that thermal efficiency is work net divided by Q in. Our Q in is going to change for our two scenarios. So our Q in is going to be the temperature or the enthalpy at point 0.3 minus the enthalpy at point 0.5. And we'll solve for that after. We can say that work net is equal to the work of the turbine minus the work of the pump. Uh, sorry, the work of the compressor in this case. It's not a pump. Divided by Q in. And we can say that this is equal to the enthalpy at point 0.3 minus the enthalpy at point 0.4 minus the enthalpy at point 0.2, minus the enthalpy at point 0.1, divided by 
the enthalpy at point 0.3 minus the enthalpy at point 0.5. If we look at the work of the compressor and the work of the turbine, we can say the work of the compressor is equal to Cp T2 minus T1. We can say that the work of the turbine is equal to Cp T3 minus T4. And we can say that Q in is Cp T3 minus T5. That means that we need to find the temperature at 2, the temperature at 4, and the temperature at 5. The temperature at 1 and the temperature at 3 are given. We can say that T2 over T1, because it's an isentropic process, is equal to 1 over K minus 1. Sorry, T2 over T1 to the power of 1 over K minus 1 is equal to P2 over P1 to the power of 1 over K. Forgot to mention earlier that we have RP, or our, rate, our pressure ratio, equal to 12. So we get here T2 is equal to T1 times our pressure ratio, P max over P min, to the K minus 1 over K. And this gives us T2 is equal to 293 times 12, so 1.4 minus 1 over 1.4. And this gives us a temperature at point 2 of 595.94 Kelvin. We're going to use the same isentropic properties for T4 over T3. To the, so the 1 over K minus 1 is equal to P4 over P3 to the 1 over K. We get that T4 is going to be equal to T3. 1 over our pressure ratio, because our high pressure is P3, our low pressure is P4, to the power of K minus 1 over K. This gives us a temperature at point 4 to be equal to 1,373 times 1 over 12 to the 1.4 minus 1 over 1.4. And this gives us a temperature of... 675.05 Kelvin. In order to get the efficiency for our two different cases, we need to find the temperature at 0.5 in both cases. We can write that the efficiency of our regenerator is equal to the temperature at 0.5 actual minus the temperature at 0.2 divided by the temperature at 0.5 ideally minus the temperature at 0.2. In an ideal case, as it comes out of our regenerator, or the temperature at 0.5 would be equal to the temperature at 0.4. So temperature at 0.5 ideally is equal to temperature at 0.4. In any other case, what happens is our temperature at 0.5 is going to be a bit lower. So we could call this 5 actual. So we can rewrite this as the temperature at 0.5 is equal to the efficiency of our regenerator times the temperature at 0.4 minus the temperature at 0.2 plus the temperature at 0.2. So if our efficiency is 1, our temperature at 0.2 would cancel. Anything lower, we're going to get some lower value than the temperature at 0.4. So for our 100%, so the uh, efficiency, sorry, sorry, our temperature at 0.5 in case 1 is going to be equal to our temperature at 0.4. Our temperature at 0.5 in case 2 is going to be equal to 0 0.75 times 675.05 minus 595.94 plus 595.94. And this gives us a temperature at 0.5 in our second case, equal to 655.27 Kelvin. So we can see that 655.27 is actually smaller than 675.05. We now have all the information we need to solve for the thermal efficiency in our different scenarios. The scenario one with the ideal regenerator of 100%, scenario two with the regenerator of 75% efficiency. We said that the thermal efficiency was equal to the temperature at 3 minus the temperature at 4, this was the work of our turbine, minus the temperature at 2 minus the temperature at 1, that was the work of our compressor, so that's our work net, divided by 
the temperature at 3 minus the temperature at 0.5. And we have our temperature at 0.5 for our two different scenarios. So we get that the thermal efficiency for case 1 is equal to 1,373 Kelvin minus the temperature at 0 0.4, 675.05, minus the temperature at 0.2, which we found to be 595.94 minus the temperature at 1, which is 293, divided by, in this case, we have the ideal case where the temperature at 5 is actually equal to the temperature at 4. So this is 1,373 minus 675.05. And this gives us an efficiency of 0 0.566. In our second case, Thermal efficiency in case 2 is going to be equal to 1,373 minus 675.05. The, uh, the work of our turbine hasn't changed. Not, nor, neither has the work of our compressor, so that's 595.94 minus 293. In this case, the only thing that changes is our temperature at 0.5, so we get 1,373 minus the one with our 75% efficient regenerator, 655.27. And this gives us an efficiency of 0 0.5503. So in case one, our thermal efficiency is 56.6%. And in case two, our thermal efficiency is 55.03%.